Good morning. Good to have you here with us this morning on our first service of 2022. Um, we, we did have uh, four of our faithful people show up for the United Methodist service this morning at 9.30. I wasn't going to say any names, but since Sharon is standing up and waving to everybody, so... So the other thing that we're finding out with being at an 11 o'clock worship time and our televised services at 30 is we're getting people that are coming in and saying, you know, I watched you on television this morning, too. So um, so the fun is going to be the, the service that is broadcast on television is a pre-recorded version of the live service right now. So the fun is going to be is if you watch the televised service and then you come here and you get to pick out well, what's different. <laughs> we'll, maybe we'll maybe we'll give prizes or something or something like that. Yes, a, a, a what? Quiz with a drawing. <laughs> I'll have Jana organize that for us. <laughs> um, today we're celebrating um, Epiphany. So Epiphany falls on the 6th of January. Um, if we were a little bit more high church than, uh, than what we are, we would be amongst those who would be having a special service on January 6th for the Epiphany. We are not high church. Um, but we still like to acknowledge and celebrate Epiphany. And so we're doing that today. Part of the things that one of the things that we started doing last year um, to to help us celebrate Epiphany and to kind of help us take something into the year is a thing called star star words. Remember last year, those of you who were here with us last year should have should have received an envelope with um, last year an envelope with a letter and some stars with words on them. We're doing them again. Um, if and that we tried to figure out who might actually be here in person today. And so we pulled your envelopes out, and they are sitting in a basket on the table in the narthex. So if you didn't pick yours up on the way in, pick it up on the way out. They're in that basket alphabetically. And I think, yeah, everybody that's in the room should, should have one in there. We also made a few blanks um, in case we had any, any visitors. So I don't think that... We need to apply. So what, what you do with these star words is, so there's, there's um, one more star word in your envelope than people in your household. Hopefully we, hopefully we figured that out correctly. So that you'll have a choice. You can, you can look at the words and you can say, oh, best and set the other one aside or share it with a friend or you can choose one and use that for a little while and then pick the other one up and use that one for a little while. The idea is is that you use this word as some some form of meditation or reflection. I actually had mine um, taped on my computer monitor throughout the year and um, you may have noticed in in the newsletter this week my, my column ended up going to my star word from last year. It had been stuck up there on my computer screen all year long, and it didn't really click in until just earlier this week when I was writing that newsletter article. So you never know where your star word is going to connect with you. So I encourage you to take them, hang on to them for the year, put them where you can see them, on the bathroom mirror, on your car dashboard, or, or wherever. Uh, know that your star words are chosen randomly. We really did. We just we turned them all upside down on the table and, and drew them out, and the ones that we drew for you were the ones that, that um, the powers that be decided you needed to have this year. So know that those were not chosen by anyone for you. They were chosen randomly. And then if you have any questions about the star words, let me, let me know. Um, this is the last week of our Facebook live stream daily devotions. We will continue those at 7 o'clock in the morning through Thursday. Thursday will be our last day. Thursday is Epiphany. And so we'll be moving into the season of Epiphany. We'll be through with the season of Christmas. We'll be moving into the season of Epiphany. And I'm not, no longer going to have to make myself presentable at 7 o'clock in the morning. 
We have a few board meetings this week. Um, Christian Services meeting tomorrow at 1. Um, here at the church and Zoom, the worship board is meeting tomorrow evening at 7, and that will be on Zoom. And the Business Affairs Board is meeting next Sunday um, at 6 o'clock, and that's going to be on Zoom. And just a reminder that there will be coffee fellowship after the service today, so hopefully the Methodists have left us a little bit of coffee. We'll be able to enjoy that with each other. Any other announcements that we need to make today? I invite you to join with me in getting ready for worship. Take a couple of those big deep breaths and let them fill you all the way down to your toes. And as you do, open yourself to the presence of God that abides here or wherever you are. Welcome to worship. Good morning and welcome to this morning's service. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. We gather wondering where will we find the babe born in Bethlehem. We gather asking where will we find the child of Christmas. We will find the child where the needy are gifted with hope, where the oppressed are set free. We gather wanting to know where will we find the Christ who has come for us. We will find our hope where fear is overwhelmed by grace, where hatred is overwhelmed by love, where all people are overwhelmed by joy. Uh, please uh, join me in the uh, opening prayer. God of wonder and mercy, 
for mystery. Today we remember how you surprise us in every age. Into the gloom of fear and want, you bring light. Into emptiness, you bring abundance. Into the cold, you bring warmth. Into the hardness of the world, you bring the greatest power we have known in the seemingly powerless form of an infant. Enter now, Holy One, among us and within us, and move us to joyful adoration of your mystery and wonder. Amen. Well, if you've been connecting um, with our morning Advent Devo- or morning Advent and Christmas devotions on Facebook, you've heard me every day since Christmas point out that the church recognizes that Christmas, Christmas is more than a day. It's a season. Christmas begins on December 25th and then goes right on up through January 6th. The church is still celebrating Christmas long after most people have put away their Christmas trees and the stores have started pushing Valentine's Day. So this continues, as I indicated earlier, until January 6th, the Epiphany, the day we recognize the journey of the wise men to Bethlehem to present their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the baby Jesus. I invite you to hear with me the story of the Epiphany the story about the wise foreigners who traveled to worship the newborn king. Let us hear from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and then we'll join together as a congregation singing about the journey as we join together in singing We Three Kings. By the way, a little bit of trivia tidbit, we don't know how many wise men there were. We have kind of gotten sucked into believing that there were three because of this song and because of the three gifts that they presented. But we really don't know. There could have been 20. There could have been two. We don't know. So let's hear the story. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. Then they saw that the star had stopped, They were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
The uh, scripture reading today is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Thank you, Bill. I just realized that I've got a couple of slides um, included in the sermon, and I forgot to bring the little remote thing, so I'm going to be giving just some little cues to Greg here in a, in a few minutes to to advance for some slides, so my, my apologies for that. I, you know, I could do one of these things and, you know, click, 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 but we'll just, we'll communicate. We do that, Greg and I do that every once in a while, communicate. At the end of the story of the wise men's trek to Bethlehem, we are told that they are warned in a dream to not return to Herod. So they left for their own country by another road. Another road. So much of last year and a half has been about traveling on other roads. I, I don't need to go through the litany of all those other roads. We can probably regrettably recite them in our sleep. Today, it's nearly eight months since we began our return back to the building. We have wandered back into this sacred space slowly, cautiously, tentatively, bit by bit, and we are picking up the pieces of that which is important to us. And perhaps even recognizing that there are some things that may not be picked up again. And that's okay. In spite of all our efforts to bring folks back, not everyone has or will. Some have found other places to worship. Some have discovered that communal worship really isn't their thing. Some are waiting for the COVID restrictions to come to an end. Some are waiting for COVID itself to be something in our past. What that means for us is we were, we were once a, a congregation, one congregation defined 
not just by unity of beliefs and faith practices, but by a unity of meeting together, literally, physically, in the same room, at the same time, for worship, for fellowship, for ministry, for education, and for service. We are no longer that. We, a, a congregation that is defined solely by place. We are one congregation, we are one church, engaged, however, in multiple settings. We're located on television. Some of you already participated in that this morning. We are located on Facebook and YouTube, and we are located in this physical space at 2900 Ninth Avenue South, right behind Dairy Queen. In, in a little while, we're going to be able to say we are located across the street from the Aquatic Center. Won't that be fun? Yet, with these new expressions of who we are and where we can be found, we, we are still giving voice to the message of God's expansive, inclusive, deep and broad love that will go to the ends of the earth to make that love known. How we go about being the church is surface stuff. That's, that's the stuff that sees daylight. What's underneath? What's the foundation? What is the what is at the core of our ministry, whether it's on television or here or on Facebook? What's our reason for even returning from this exile that we've been experiencing for the last year and a half? In Celtic spirituality, there's this thing called an infinity knot, and it holds a place of important symbolism. So that's when I need to go to the next slide. There it is. When you look at or handle an infinity knot, and this is just an example of one of them, you are aware that there are places where the cord is on the surface. You can see it, you can feel it. And when you, but when you follow it, it, you see that it disappears behind another part of the cord. It, it wraps in and around itself, it's, and it's given structure and strength by what is not always seen or felt. It's the same thing with weaving. If we can hit the next slide. Before the design on a weaving is created, there's a, there's a foundation that is laid by the threads, by the warp that is laid out. Then that design is woven onto that foundation. That foundation gives shape and structure and is often not seen. Yet, what is seen and felt would not exist without it. So now we can go back to the next slide, Greg. We, Greg, go ahead and go to the next slide. We are returning to our home not by one road, but by many. Television, social media, and in person. But that's the surface stuff. That's the design. That's the stuff that catches daylight. It's important, and it's worthy of our attention and our energy, but it's not the whole story. Because underneath all of that is something that gives us our shape and our structure, it's the bedrock of our being. It's the foundation of who we are. We simply call it the love of God. When the wise ones of old ventured from their cozy homes far away from the place from which our sacred texts arise, they had a notion about where the newborn king they sought would be found, and they thought that that was Jerusalem. It was the spiritual central location of his people. And when they arrived there, they discovered that 
He was not there. The king of the Jews was not in the midst of their holiest city. The Christ was not to be found amongst the church pews or at the altar or in the choir loft or even in fellowship hall. The holy family was in a sense in exile. Exile is nothing new for our ancestors in faith. Some of our most powerful sacred texts have emerged from times of exile, times of disruption, times of displacement. From that time of disruption, we get some powerhouse words that say things like, comfort, comfort, oh my people. I can't hear that without wanting to, you know, to sing it. And words like, the people who live in darkness have seen a great light. And then the great prose of Isaiah that proclaims the inbreaking of God's peaceable realm where lions and lambs will dwell together in comfort and peace. And it's in looking to the return from exile we get the powerful, beautiful words from the prophet Jeremiah that Bill read for us just a few minutes ago. Let me read some more. Let me read some of those again to you. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company. They shall return. Well, history tells us some of them came back. Some did not. Some had settled into the world of exile so well that they blended into that different culture completely. Some evolved to become the Samaritans that were so despised by the Jews of Jesus' day. The descendants of those who had fled at Jerusalem when the Babylonians invaded did not return to what they had been before. What they found upon their return is that the everlasting covenant that God had established with those who had gone before them was not place or even time specific. Underneath the events that had so totally changed their lives, the disruption, the separation, the uncertainty, the angst, was the bedrock upon which creation was built, the love of God. That which gave their life as a community of faith faith, its shape, its structure, its strength. It was the bedrock of their being, the love of God. It's the same for us. Although our circumstances are vastly different than those who have gone before us in faith, we still have this sense of disruption and separation and uncertainty and angst. Things are different. Life is different. Many things have changed. And the pandemic is but one. What we do and how we do it looks different than it once did. That's the surface stuff. That's the stuff that catches daylight. It's important and worthy of our attention and energy, but it's not the whole story. Underneath all of that is something that gives our very shape to us, our structure, our strength. It's the bedrock of our being. It's the foundation of who we are as a community of faith the love of God. In times of utter disruption, we can lean into those great messages of the prophets. God will turn mourning into joy. There will be comfort because that's what God does. Restores life, even in the most disruptive of times. 
Those threads of God's never-ending love emerge not to cover up but to carry and give shape, to be a foundation upon which new life is woven. The story of the journey of the wise men can speak to us in this time and this day and, and can be a model for us, not that we have to find a star to follow or make a pilgrimage to Bethlehem or round up some gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The model they make for us is to seek the ongoing story of God's love revealed in unexpected places and underneath the challenges to get down to the bedrock of that which has shaped all of creation. God's never-ending, expansive, inclusive, world-changing love. That's, that's what defines us as a church, as a community of faith, as a congregation, as followers of Christ. May the place that you are in be held as sacred, for it is God's goodness that makes it so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand and join together in singing um, Many Are the Light Beams. It's, it was, it'll probably be a new one for you, so it's in New Century Hymnal, page number 163. Hold this slide there for just a second, because I'll have a seat. Um, I just want to point out, so I went back on one of our uh, old council meetings that we had recorded, and I pulled off this, this slide. Um, I want you all to notice that these members of your church council are laughing and smiling. Who says serving in church leadership can't be fun? <laughs> I wasn't listening to the recording to know just what was being said at the time, but but it was, um, it was a fun moment. Um, for our time in prayer today, um, we're going to, I'm going to be asking for you to share your joys and concerns, and then we're going to move right on into the offertory and invite you to use the time um, while the offertory is being played um, to meditate on the joys and concerns that have been raised or your, your own uh, prayers that you have brought with you today. So, of course, we will be um, lifting up those who have been affected by the wildfires in Colorado and continuing to do so for those who have been impacted by the fire in Denton and in um, Gibson Flats. What other uh, joys and concerns do you 
bring with you today? Yes, Sue. Uh, Okay. Okay. So, so Ju Judy's sister Janet, who starts chemotherapy tomorrow, and for. Tom and Judy's son's wife, Carrie. Her second bout of breast cancer. We're going to draw a little family tree of the Turtons and the Hendricks. Speaking of family trees and the Hendricks, it's Sue's birthday today. Happy birthday, Sue. What other joys and concerns, Janet? Oh, for Jordy, Jody Nordglund is having surgery on, on the 6th. Thank you. And continued prayers for Gary Quick, Kelly's um, father, who last I heard, I think he's still in benefits, but they're looking for a transition room for him. Um, so prayers for him as he continues to, to deal with kind of a, an ongoing illness. Other joys and concerns this morning? Yes, Hank. Your fraternity brother, Steve, uh, has been placed in hospice. Anything else this morning? In this season of celebrating the gift of the Christ child, we also celebrate the many gifts that make our ministry in Great Falls and around the world through our denomination possible. I invite you as you um, listen to today's offertory, um, please remember those who have been lifted up in prayer and those um, that perhaps you have brought with you that have not found voice just yet. And then also be open to how it is that God is calling you to present your gifts to the world. Let us listen to the offertory. It's a communion Sunday, and the table is ready for us. Um, after we get through the communion liturgy, you'll be invited to come forward to receive the elements here. 
Um, if you prefer not to come forward before we start serving everybody, if you would like a prepackaged communion, I'll have you just raise your hand and we'll have one of the ushers bring one of those to you. For those of you who are coming forward, the ushers will be dismissing you by section and you're invited to come down the, the aisle where they direct you and then make a loop to go back into your row so that we're not doing a lot of crossing each other's paths and we'll go section by section by section. I have no idea which section they're gonna do first, so I'm just gonna start feeding people as they, as they come up. Um, as you come forward to receive the bread, what is helpful is if you just simply Hold your hands out, palm up, and we can place a piece of bread in your hand and then invite you to remove your mask and eat while you're here. And, um, and then move over to where the, where the juice trays are. Take a cup of juice and remove your mask and drink and you can place the juice cup back in the tray or if it's gonna be easier for you to just place it on the table. We'll, we'll do it that way as well. Amid all the gifts, the giving, the receiving, the returning, we have yet one more gift to receive. It's given here at this table by the one who gives the gift of life itself. This gift is given to all that those who receive will know the voracious love of the one who seeks us out and gives us life. So come not because you have earned it, but because it is freely and joyously given. Come. Let us join together in prayer. People of Advent, the Lord be with you. People of Christmas, lift up your hearts. People of the star, offer your songs of joy and thanksgiving to God. In that first moment, O oh God, you spoke, and the light of creation dispelled the thick darkness of chaos. You whispered, and your glory filled the skies. He sang, and the dust of the earth was shaped into your image as you breathed life into us. We could have lived in grace and peace with you for as long as the sun endures, for as long as the moon hangs in the night sky. But we were tempted by the sweet taste of sin and overwhelmed with temptation's wealth of cheap gifts and thrills. The prophets were sent to tell of your gifts of joy and peace, but we listened to the world's news of success and power and achievement. Finally, in a time of despair, you sent Jesus, your servant of salvation. Therefore, we will join our voices with the wise ones, as well as the foolish of every time and place, and forever sing of your grace, saying together, Holy, 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 God of bright dawns, all creation renders tributes of praise to you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who saves the lives of the needy. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of redemption, and blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior. We remember that on a night lit by your love, he gathered with his disciples for the feast of Passover. Taking the bread, he gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, Jesus took the cup and after giving you thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This, the cup of the new covenant, is sealed with my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As we remember his birth, as we prepare to journey with him this year, we speak of that mystery called faith, which is revealed to us through Christ, saying together, Christ came the morning star of love, 
Christ died, the night star of salvation. Christ arose, the radiant star of resurrection. Christ will come again, the constellation of hope. Holy One of stars and sojourners, send down your spirit of hope upon those gathered around this table and on the gifts of the bread and the cup that they might make us your faithful and loving children. Feed us with the bread of hope so when we leave we will travel to defend the weak, to speak for the voiceless, to assist those cast aside. Refresh us with the sweet nectar of grace so we, overwhelmed with joy, would go forth to enter the hearts of everyone we meet. And when eternity's time begins and we are gathered around your table with friends and family we love, with those we ignored and mistreated, with all our sisters and brothers of grace, we will lift our songs of glad joy to you, God in community, holy in one, revealed in the one who has taught us to pray together by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, the bread of heaven is broken and shared that we may all be made whole. And the cup of salvation, the cup of the new covenant is poured out for all for the forgiveness of sin. These are the gifts of God. They are given for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. Is there anybody that would like the prepackaged?
I invite you to join with me in prayer. Light revealing God, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Fulfill in us the promise of Christ's glory that we may overflow with the boundless compassion and forgiveness which was first given us through Jesus Christ our Lord, that all the world may be nourished. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our closing hymn, As With Gladness, Those of Old, number 159. As we prepare to leave this place, be aware of the people around you and the people that you will encounter today and in the days to come. And as you do, know that you have found the child of Christmas within them. Don't stay here. Go wherever God leads you to find the babe of Bethlehem waiting for you. Go to find the child of Christmas in every person you meet. Go to find the one who has come for us and can be found in all the broken places. Let us then go forth to work side by side to bring healing and hope. Go in peace and please be seated for the postlude. <laughs>